I got on a train today and just took off. I had only a vague goal in mind. A world I hardly knew. It's hard to get there. The way is long and difficult. But as I watch the landscape passing by, as I arrive at a strange station and breathe in its fresh air, I feel a hazy happiness in my chest. land, that which is alien, keeps threatening us with its fists, stirring our fears and intimidating us. But it also lures us in, exerts a pull that is hard to escape. The velvety veil of the unknown only subtly suggests that what it covers. But now, a decisive step, and another, and another, until I'm standing at the door of the unfamiliar, blinking helplessly at first. But then contours gently peel out of the darkness, paths to walk, steps to climb, new perspectives around every corner. I see strange treasures, lose myself in artfully twisting corridors among the relics of a far-flung history. The familiar argues with the unknown, the new with the old. The red thread gets tangled up, an inextricable ball of wool. What can I believe? What person would I be if I had chosen one of these unknown paths? The alien makes me think. Perhaps that is its very purpose. Sometimes, my heart wants to burst with happiness at the abundance of our world. So much to discover, to learn, to see, to feel, to taste. A palimpsest of ever new magic verses. But other times, this very abundance weighs down my shoulders, pushes me to the ground, presses the air out of my lungs. The air tastes of lemons and patina, of seaweed and oleander. There is little to do here, and even less to see. But no, that's not right. It's just that my eyes have forgotten how to see, 
or at least how to see more than the shimmering facades rushing by. I keep looking out of the window, watching a rooster as he writes fine patterns into the red earth. Few things have ever made me so happy. Very few. Somehow, I find this astonishingly difficult to admit, though this admission opens up so many perspectives. I follow the signs of this world, and they lead me to these small, hidden places. I hear the bubbling in the vats. I follow the immense stirring spoon on its rounds. Carefully practiced movements taking turns, unhurriedly, again and again, to perfection. The eyes of the men are shining, and I feel love for the primordial and simple. A love that endures for generations and gives support in the roaring maelstrom of the world. The longer I watch, the more do I realize time is an immensely precious commodity, not only when it's filled to the brim, but also when it simply passes, when it lets things mature. Life in the streets vibrates. It floods my mind unfiltered. A hodgepodge of smells flies into my nostrils. Salted perch and fresh thyme. The aroma of pickled olives mixed with the perfume of old ladies. I catch some curious looks. Unbeatable offers. Declarations of love. First, I'm overwhelmed by this flood of stimuli. But then I begin to enjoy this eruption of life. I let myself drift, not just through the alleys, but through time, right through the country and its people into the heart of the unknown, in search of the essence that holds this colorful world together. I notice myself becoming more courageous with every step and every word. I notice how the door to my heart opens. I'm ready to embrace the unknown like a long missed friend, to sing and dance with it. The locals make it easy for me, invite me into their wondrous world. They let me share not only their excellent wine, but also their stories, secrets, feelings. Their openness disarms me. I feel touched, affected. The joyful heat warms my very being. Music echoes in the marrow of my bones. I'm gloriously refreshed by the lightness of being alive. Every spark of this night I eagerly absorb. I want to heat up what lies dormant in my heart. Light spots whirl by, wild and restrained. Everything is in flux. The cascade of light and music and feeling won't fit into any box. Every dream has a catch. 
the awakening. Instead of the adventure, suddenly the routine. Instead of ease, the effort. The moment turns into days, weeks, years. And the certainty arises that everything new, everything unknown, has an expiry date. How I had envied them, the fishermen of Messina, going out to sea every day, navigating their famous straits, their proud faces tanned and weather-worn, their hand at the helm, staring at the horizon. The fishing grounds are their home, their place of longing, day in, day out, for a lifetime. I imagine what it would be like to go to sea every day on this coral-covered boat. How the wind penetrates every corner of your body. How wave after wave crashes against the boat. High up on the wavering lookout, the scouts watch for swordfish that are careless enough to show their shiny backs. Below lurks the cat, the catcher waiting for his signal. An odor of threat lies in the salty air. On the left side, Skilla is lurking. On the right side, you can hear Charybdis panting, both awaiting to devour the sailors. A test Jason and Odysseus had to survive back in their day. I shudder, one stroke. End of the agony. A martial ritual that lives on through times and tides. An eye for an eye. The circle of life. The men are hunters, like in days gone by. And yet, they are also prey. Hunted by a world that is drawing ever closer. And I wonder if there is such a thing as destiny. Whether all the rituals and routines whether toughness and defiance are just symptoms of fear. I'm roaming the meadows as if in a trance, feeling the earth under my toes seeing the grass billow in the wind. Once again, I fill my heart with the motley images and the strange sounds, only to release them. I breathe in and out, in and out. I feel the pressure go, an unexpected burden lifts from my shoulders. Everything I had collected and piled up with my searching eyes and greedy hands starts floating. Circling around my head like gold dust, weightless and so beautiful. Suddenly, everything feels familiar, like coming home from a long journey. The trees, the sheep, the cicadas in the leaves, the light in the treetops, the heather full of bees. Here, there are no strangers, no more shame, no more fear. All that makes us so different and distant is lost in the golden twilight, like a pale, long-forgotten dream. I press my ear to the heart of the world and hear it beating. I feel the warmth pulsate. I feel my cheeks blush. Yes, this is where I belong. Not into a country, not into a city, not into any place. I'm no longer a traveler, no longer a stranger. With all my senses, I feel the restless carnival of this world flowing into this one point. Here, there is no difference between the known and the unknown, the origin and the end. And I realize that my journey had just begun. <laughs> 